hard when two characters are arguing to know how much of that argument is about whether the goal should be achieved and how much is whether one should change their point of view or not. Okay? And so it's easy to lose track over a number of scenes that are dealing with two people arguing about both those issues to know if you filled in all the gaps in each, if you've made sure you've got a complete chain of reasoning as to why one should change one's mind, and also a complete um, uh, chain of trying to physically stop the other one from achieving something. Okay? So when you have those gaps, and they're only carried by passion, that's kind of the plot version of melodrama. Melodrama is, it doesn't matter if the arguments are complete, as long as the passion carries it through. And then if you have your overplayed characters doing it, like we talked about, over-exaggerating being good, over-exaggerating being a protagonist, over-exaggerating, you know, I'll quit, I'll never quit no matter what, you know. Now, well, I'll save you now, you know, that kind of thing. That, that's going to have to turn melodramatic into characters. Then if between them, so here's where the triangle comes into uh, play. What you do is, you end up putting a, like a protagonist and main character in one character. Okay, so that there's one person, just a, a you can have a typical hero, it's fine. You have a typical hero if you want. Is there a typical hero? But you give the role of being antagonist to some bad guy someplace, even in a, a typical story. It could be a good guy, we talked about before, it could be good. But let's just say for argument, it's a standard bad guy, antagonist. But you put the obstacle or influence character role over here, maybe in the girlfriend or something like that. Now, this is all stereotypical, but um, girl theme, I think I can describe it. <laughs> okay, anyway, but there you go. Girlfriend. So you have these, um, uh, the girlfriend and the bad guy. And now this is your standard stereotypical dramatic triangle. And what happens then is you split the arguments. You end up having all of the argument about whether the goal or not is achieved, the efforts go up, tug and pull back and forth, is going to happen here. And all the moralizing and making your moral point or your message point about what's the right way to look at a situation, what's the right way to act, what's the right way to be, that's going to be made over here. So now because of that, it's clear that whenever the character here, we'll call this Joe, whenever Joe okay, is talking to the girlfriend, we know that it's about, um, you know, if only I were to adopt his tactics, I know I could beat him. But if you adopt his tactics, you'd be just like he is. Well, if I don't adopt the tactics, I might lose, you know. And so the antagonist is never trying to change his mind, he's just trying to stop him. And the girlfriend is never trying to stop him from anything, per, per se. She's just trying to make sure he doesn't fall into you know, an area he shouldn't. Or maybe she's like that enemy soldier who's actually trying to lure him to do the wrong thing because of his attraction to her. And you know, he would then give up the thing and adopt the tactics. If you will adopt the tactics that he uses, you'll win. You know? And he has to pull out against that. So whatever the moral argument is, that could happen here. That's your standard triangle you see all the time. Has anybody seen the movie Witness? Okay, um, You know Witness? Witness is a story about an Amish girl named Rachel in the movie who, who uh, has this yearning to see the outside world and be part of the, the world of the English. Uh, okay, so uh, that's what she wants. And her son witnesses a murder, and as a result of it, a character named John Book, who's played by Harrison Ford, uh, who's a policeman, comes into her life to try and protect her and her kid, who's the witness, until they can bring the, the people to, uh, to justice. Turns out the people who are involved in the crime are in the police department, so it's very important to keep everybody sequestered. So he's injured, and he is trying to uh, whisk them off to safety, away from the police. And they go back to um, to their their home and their land and their community. And he recuperates among the Amish. And there's a lot of interesting cultural storytelling going on. But the real point is that in that case, the story is told through her eyes. We see through Rachel's eyes. Okay, but although we see it through her eyes. It's not about, there's no question that John Book, the character, is going to go back eventually out among the English and continue to be a police officer. The question is, will she be lured by him to go out there as well? In the meantime, it's the battle with these drug lords who are infiltrated. So John Book is protagonist because he's battling the bad guy antagonists about this drug ring going on in the police department. But he's only the obstacle character, not the main character. He's the obstacle character who provides that, that alternate view through the eyes of Rachel who's the main character. So in this case, it's also uh, the girlfriend, but she's the main character in this case. So everything that we see happening, we watch John Book going against the antagonist through her eyes, much more like in To Kill Mockingbird. In this case, we have a nice triangle created because two roles, again, two of the aspects of the hero are combined, protagonist and obstacle character, who says, you should be free, you should go out, you should be who you need to be, explore. And she's basically saying, yeah, but, 
I, I have an attraction to that, but by the same token, I have my duty to my family, and my father would be heartbroken, and my community, and, and the guy who loves me and, and expects to marry me, and all this. And, and so that's where that whole personal skirmish is going. Um, you can also, obviously, as you know, you could put another one with there, make the antagonist the obstacle character, or the main character. And so you can play with this little dramatic triangle and take those four roles that we talked about that we saw completely separate into Kill a Mockingbird and turn them into three characters instead of four and create a, a very typical storytelling technique. When you use them as four, then you have a completely separate exploration, which requires some additional sophisticated storytelling to make sure that everybody knows who's what and that there's no overlay or uh, that, uh, that gets it confused as to who's the main character. It's a little difficult to do. When you put them both into a single combination, you run the risk of being melodramatic because it's very hard to see when they're arguing about one thing or about the other and whenever they get together. But if you use some form of the triangle, then you end up with a really strong foundation dramatically on which to base your story that doesn't require a whole lot of extra explanation because it's very clear that when this character argues here, it's going to be over the moral issue when they argue here, it's going to be their effort to achieve the goal and then be stopped by that other character. So that dramatic triangle is very, very useful. 